In 1920, the 100 meter sprint record was 10.6 seconds. Scientists declared it the absolute human limit. They were wrong. By 1968, we shattered the 10 second barrier. Wrong again. Today, Usain Bolt owns 9.58 seconds and everyone's saying the same thing. That's the limit. Here's what they don't tell you. Your body is theoretically capable of running 40 miles per hour right now. The same legs you're sitting on could match a charging rhino, but there's a disturbing reason you can't access that speed. And it's the same reason our ancestors were the most terrifying predators on earth. See, evolution played a cruel joke. It gave us the hardware for incredible speed, then installed software that makes us slow. But that software turned us into something far more frightening than any sprinter. Let me show you why being slow made humans the ultimate nightmare. Speaking of relentless pursuit in the digital world, you're the one being persistently hunted. Every website, every click, every search tracked and followed just like our ancestors tracked prey. But unlike prehistoric deer, you can actually escape your digital hunters. That's why I want to thank today's sponsor, CyberGhost VPN. With over 38 million users worldwide, CyberGhost is one of the most trusted VPN providers on the market. Everything tracks you your ISP, router, browsers, and it's the modern version of persistence hunting, except you are the prey. CyberGhost breaks this digital hunt, encrypting your traffic through secure servers in 100 plus countries. CyberGhost also unlocks content from 40 plus streaming platforms and protects seven devices simultaneously. No wonder they have a near perfect trust pilot rating. Here's the deal, $2.03 per month plus four months free. That's 84% off with our link. 45 day money back guarantee, completely risk free. Stop being digitally hunted. Go to the link in the description. Now let's look at why your legs are built completely wrong. First off, your legs are built wrong. Look at any fast animal like cheetah, horse, even your dog, and you'll notice something bizarre. All their leg muscles are bundled up high, near the hip, connected to their feet by long, light tendons. It's like having the engine of a car in the trunk with cables running to the wheels. Light lower legs can swing at incredible frequencies. Now, look at your legs. You've got massive calf muscles hanging way down there like someone strapped dumbbells to a pendulum. Every step, you're swinging these meat clubs back and forth. The force required is insane. It's why you max out at five steps per second while the cheetah hits four strides per second, but each stride covers three times the distance. Here's where it gets weird. Researchers at Southern Methodist University led by Peter Wyand discovered that if we could somehow redirect the force application time during ground contact, human limbs could theoretically handle speeds up to 40 miles per hour. The muscles can contract fast enough and the tendons are strong enough but we can't access it. Why? Because of the second engineering failure, which is our feet. We're essentially stuck in second gear. Cheetahs run on their toes with foot bones as long as their shin bones, which is a natural high gear. We run on stubby feet, optimized for standing, not speed. Think of a cheetah's foot as a, as a sports car gearbox for acceleration. Our foot is more like a truck's transmission built for power and stability over uneven ground, not for top speed. But this engineering failure was a deliberate trade-off. Our legs aren't built for speed, they're built for efficiency and stability over marathon distances. This design is part of a full body system unique to humans. For example, we have a nuchal ligament, which is a tough band of tissue at the back of our necks that connects our skull to our spine. It's found in other endurance animals like horses and dogs, and it acts like a shock absorber, stabilizing our head while we run. Ours is uniquely robust. And then there are our glutes. Ours are massive compared to other primates. They aren't just for power, they're the body's most powerful stabilizer, preventing our torso from twisting and collapsing with every step during a long chase. Our so-called 
flawed legs, our head stabilizing ligament, and our powerful booties all form a system designed for one thing, relentless pursuit. But here's where evolution gets interesting. What we lost in speed, we gained in something terrifying, the most advanced cooling system in nature. Your body is essentially a two kilowatt biological air conditioner. When muscles work, they're only 26% efficient. The other 74% becomes heat. For most animals, this is catastrophic. A cheetah can only sprint for 30 seconds before its brain literally starts cooking. A horse running in heat will die of heat stroke within an hour. You, you can run for 80 hours straight. Dean Karnazes proved this by running 350 miles without stopping. No sleep, no breaks, just constant forward motion for three days. Try to imagine any animal doing that, they'd be dead in hours. We achieved this through a bizarre evolutionary trade. We lost our fur. Every square inch of your naked skin is a radiator covered in up to 5 million sweat glands that can pump out 3 liters per hour. Each gram of evaporating sweat removes 550 calories of heat. You're literally water cooled like a gaming PC. But this biological air conditioner would be useless without the brain to manage it. Humans possess a unique talent called Helio anticipation, the ability to subconsciously calculate the energy required for a task and pace ourselves accordingly. It's why you intuitively know you can't sprint a marathon. Your brain is constantly monitoring temperature, energy reserves, and distance, regulating your effort to ensure you can just barely make it to the finish without dying. It's the world's most advanced cruise control. But there is also an element of laziness, which I can personally attest to it in underestimation of our durability. While a deer sprints until it overheats and collapses, a human hunter's brain expertly meters out their energy, ensuring they have enough left for the final mile and the kill. But the real genius? We're the only animal with a two-speed transmission. While walking, we barely use our calves. Maximum efficiency, minimum heat. Running, we shift gears, rise onto our forefoot, and engage the full system. It's like having eco mode and sport mode. Bears can't do this. Horses can't do this. Even other primates can't do this. We're mechanically unique, approaching our prey with the inevitability of a Terminator. This is where human running becomes horror movie material. We couldn't catch a rabbit in a sprint, but we didn't need to. We had something worse, relentlessness. Picture being a deer in prehistoric Africa. These hairless apes start following you. You sprint away easily. You're three times faster. You rest, panning, overheating. Then you see them again, still coming. You run, they follow. Three hours pass. They're still there behind you, stalking you quietly, but not charging at you, waiting for your exhaustion. After five hours, your body is shutting down from hyperthermia, but they keep appearing on the horizon, walking, jogging, never stopping. We were the titans of the savanna. We hunted like psychological warfare. The Kalahari San people still do this, running kudu antelopes for four to eight hours until the animals literally collapse. The antelope's final moments aren't spent fighting, they're spent lying down, accepting death from exhaustion. It wasn't about overwhelming power or speed, it was about the psychological break, that moment when the prey realizes resistance is futile, pure endurance as a weapon. Modern ultramarathoners accidentally recreated this horror. The Badwater Ultramarathon 135 miles through Death Valley in 130 degrees Fahrenheit heat should be impossible for any mammal. Humans finish it in under 24 hours. We're not the fastest and we are not the strongest. We're something worse, inevitable. While a pronghorn antelope can sustain 30 miles per hour for four hours, which is very impressive, humans can maintain six to 10 miles per hour for days. The pronghorn will eventually stop, but we, we won't. You know what's terrifying? Amazon delivery drivers walk 
10 to 20 miles per shift. Food delivery cyclists cover 50 plus miles daily. We've unconsciously recreated persistence hunting and capitalism, except now we're both the predator and the prey. So yes, your body could theoretically run 40 miles per hour if we could overcome our mechanical limitations. Scientists are studying exoskeletons and biomechanical modifications that might unlock this speed, but evolution chose differently. It traded our maximum speed for maximum fear. We became the monster that never stops following. The predator you can't escape by running, not through speed, but through the slow, terrifying certainty that we will still be behind you when your body gives up. Every marathon runner channels this ancient horror. Every ultra athlete proves we're still the apex persistence predator. We're not trapped in slow bodies. We're perfectly designed killing machines that happen to walk upright. Here's what haunts me. If humans evolve from persistence predators who never stop pursuing, what are we unconsciously chasing now? And more disturbing, what happens when we catch it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And yes, I did just explain how humans are apex endurance predators while being out of breath from walking upstairs to record this. Peak 21st century male performance right here. Thanks for watching. Thanks again to CyberGhost VPN for sponsoring this video. Grab 84% off plus four months free with the link below. Even if it wasn't sponsored, I have personally used CyberGhost for a long time and recommend it. Thanks again. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe.